everybody. Welcome back to The Common Good, AM 1160, Hope for Your Life. Alongside Aubrey Sampson, my name is Brian Fromm. So glad to have you with us today. And Aubrey, uh, we couldn't be more excited about the movie coming out tomorrow, yeah, Jesus Revolution. Uh, a lot of people talking about this movie, a lot of people excited for this movie. And so we are thrilled to be joined uh, by one of the co-directors of Jesus Revolution, Brent McCorkle. Brent, how you doing today, bud? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we talk about the movie, what's it like that it's coming out tomorrow? Is this like having a kid? Yeah, uh, like, what question. is going on in your soul right now? <laughs> yeah, uh, so, yeah, similar analog to a kid. For me, it's more like your kid's first day of kindergarten. So, <laughs> oh, been, interesting. Yeah, you spent fear. time with them. You've you've raised them. You've you know taught it, uh, taught your kid the best morals and and uh, you know poured everything you can. But man, at some point, dude, they they leave. I, I'll never forget. It was a hard day for me. I took my little daughter. She was a small frame little kid, but I took her to kindergarten, and she walked up. And I, I was already heartbroken, but she didn't even have <laughs> enough strength to open the door of the school. Oh! And man, I, I lost it. And you know, a teacher ultimately came and let her in. But um, but man, you know, uh, it's got to this movie. She's got to go out there and find yeah. her own life and and yeah. you know, have the struggles and and uh, but hopefully make a lot of friends along the way and find <laughs> the purpose and the meaning and you know all that. So yeah, for me, it's letting your kid go. You know, out to the mm. world. To that is a, such a great. Have a life such of a great metaphor. For sure. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Well, okay, Brent. So for people who don't know, who, people who don't actually know about the Jesus Revolution that happened, but then the movie Jesus Revolution, tell us what's it about. Give us the background. Yeah, so in in the 60s, it's just a desperate, terrible time for America and really for the world. A lot of people thought the world was ending, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had, uh, you had the Vietnam War. You had the rise of the Cold War. You had multiple assassinations. You had... America's own uh, state troopers gunned down uh, student protesters at Kent State. You had the countercultural movement. You had the civil rights movement. Uh, it, it was um, not only was it a really dark time. You had all this division, you know, um, around Vietnam and and uh, just where the country was going at large. And um, a lot of a lot of comparisons and analogs to today. Honestly, just mm -hmm. so much division and strife and hate. Uh, people mm -hmm. not seeing eye to eye, people screaming at each other in the streets. Um, and wow. uh, honestly, man, there was just so much despair and despondency. Um, so in the middle of all this, the hippies ejected out of culture and created the countercultural movement, you know, uh, rock and roll and, and free love and LSD. <laughs> and, the, you know, they just they rejected categorically the direction that their parents took with yeah. it and rightfully so it was it had gotten really really material and very plastic and it was uh you know that's that's where the phrase keeping up with the joneses came up you know mm -hmm. and that's where it came from um and the kids were like yeah we just don't mom and dad we just don't want your life we just don't want this so a lot wow. of kids ran away um the hippie movement I actually think could have been sustainable. But what happened was there were a lot of real hippies and then there was just a lot of kids that ran away from home and they all went yeah. to San Francisco and they crashed yeah. the entire city. There was like more population in San Francisco than the actual city itself could handle. Wow. And they crashed the entire. Like, no system. way. Like the infrastructure of the city. Yeah, wow. That's really the fastest thing that ended the hippie movement. Um, huh. Whereas all the teenage runaways kind of want to be hippies, you know, um, <laughs> But it was very sad, man. I watched a bunch of documentaries and like parents would go up to San Francisco, like their kids dropped out on them. Like they didn't even know if their kids were alive or not. It was it was a really sad mm. time. So there was a, some archive I watched where people had put posters like, have you seen my child? You know, and it was it was a very oh, wow. a dark, dark time in America. Yeah, um, yeah. But in the middle of all this, the hippies hit a wall because there's this intangible thing that we're all searching for. Um, and they were looking for it in a lot of different places. And um, uh, they actually returned back to spirituality. And, and some would argue, as my co-director would, that, that it was a quest for spirituality and God and meaning all along. And hmm. they were just trying all these different things. Yeah, wow. Well, Kind of on a dare in Southern California in 1969, uh, this hippie street preacher dares this conservative, uh, white, uh, very you know moralist 
pastor to open up his door to these hippies. And at the time, the hippies were scorned. I mean, we have Reagan on tape just trashing the hippies. Like, you know, they were wow. not, they were not, um, they were not appreciated in society at all. They were viewed wow. as a scourge in our society. So oh for Chuck Smith, the pastor of Calvary in Southern California, to open up his door to these kids that were maligned and written off as losers was a huge step. It was huge. Mm -hmm. It was huge. And he didn't even really want to do it, but he, he became convicted and ultimately opened up his doors to these hippies and these disparate groups of people come together under wow. the banner of Christian love and inclusion, wow. unity, belonging, compassion, empathy, you know, a lot of the things I believe are the core tenets of Christian faith. Um, yeah. And they find a way to make it work. So mm. with Chuck's obedience, letting the hippies in, but the hippies also bring in the love and the peace yeah. and yeah. the right. freedom and the kindness. Right. Uh, and mm. together they kind of made this beautiful new gumbo, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. yeah. <laughs> never really existed before wow. and uh, and obviously a lot of comedy ensues and a lot of heartfelt moments and our movie just it has something for everybody and that's um, awesome it's crafted with a lot of love um mm -hmm. there were a lot of people of faith that worked on this film but but we had people from all walks of life on it and man we just i don't know it was uh it's the most beautiful thing i've ever worked on and the vibe was so great on set and mm. everybody showed up to work so hard but um but beyond that, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, manifestation of love in this time of hate. And I, yeah. really, I do hope this movie is a callback to the simplicity of the love of God, which I believe in firmly. There's a there's a love out there that doesn't have to exist for the universe mm -hmm. to work, mm -hmm. but but it is, and it's like the highest form of spiritual power out there. Wow. And, um, so yeah, we're just it's a call back to that. It's a return to that and awesome. we get for a few moments we get to see uh these people that you wouldn't expect to find love for each other actually do in a That's church. So cool. You know, yeah. of all, of all yeah. places. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, people out there know the name Greg Laurie. Obviously if you listen to this station, he plays a major role in this. Uh Chuck Smith. Uh Here's the $64,000 question, Brent. You brought it up. One of the overarching things as you watch this movie is probably also a longing to see these kinds of things happen now. Do you leave this movie going, yeah, that could happen now. It would look different, but this type of coming together could happen now. Does this leave you hopeful? I am hopeful for it. I am hopeful. Um, it will take Christian leaders and Christian thought leaders, I think, to actually look at our movie and go, Ow, this really hurts because I'm not I'm not carrying myself on the earth like Chuck did in this moment. Mm. So I'm have to go home and completely rebuild and rethink how I do church and, mm. and how I'm building my spiritual community or not building it, honestly. Mm. Because a lot of people are gonna look at the movie and go, that's what needs to happen. Yeah. But the problem with that is um it is what needs to happen, but it's going to take people doing unprecedented things to open up their church to marginalized mm -hmm. groups like Chuck wow. did. So, wow. uh, so, but if, if enough people woke up to that and, and the next morning and said, all right, let's go, God, I'm, I'm in your hands. I'm yielded to you. I surrendered. What do you want me to do? What are the mm -hmm. people that, who are the people that um, don't feel invited? Mm. Uh, feel scorned by society, and mm. I'm going to go after those guys. Um, yeah. I, I always have a couple points up. Man, it's crazy. It's really sharpened me. Um, I'm a pastor's kid. You know, I'm not a preacher mm. or anything, but it really sharpened me in a, a lot of my thought process. But but if you think about Jesus, Jesus grew up in a hyper religious time, and he was considered a rabbi or a teacher. But yeah. we wouldn't have the Christian faith. We wouldn't even know who Jesus was if he had stayed in the church as a rabbi and just taught mm. like everybody else was mm. doing. But he did the most radical thing. Like his yeah. ministry was outside the church, you know, and, and, yeah. and he was so yeah. criticized and maligned for even the people he hung out with, even the people he talked to. Yeah. And yet that was the beauty of what he did in this mm. hyper-religious time. And um, mm. so, yeah, man, for me, it's like a return to form of even the wow. model that Jesus taught us to go after he's like hey this is how you should pray yeah. and i think without saying it like this is how you should operate as my followers Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. so to, to the long-winded answer is yes it can happen 
Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to take unprecedented effort and a rethinking mm. of of um, the love uh, of God and just even the, like the construct of church and how ch- yeah. the church operates yeah. in the in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Brian and I are both pastors, Brent. So this is a very interesting conversation for us. And like, what does it mean for yeah. us as leaders? And what does it mean for us to move? differently you know or to embrace things that jesus has called us to embrace people jesus has called us to um okay it's i don't know if you can comment on this but i do just want to ask you it's interesting to me that the movie's coming out as this asbury revival is sort of i don't want to say winding down but you know uh, any thoughts on that like have you been paying attention to what's going on there and has making this film given you any perspective on that I think revivals are good. I, I had a personal revival working on this movie, mm. um, for sure. But um, I'm personally looking for the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> like, I think for me, it's really weird. It, you know, and I don't mean to be cynical or skeptical at all, but like, I think, um, man, I, I think revival is good because it makes you stop you know and it, it does revive you and it wakes up a slumbering you know yeah. if the church is slumbering it wakes up a slumbering giant or those kind of things but yeah. but at the same time you know um i think there's i think we have a long way to go and mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. you know i i say this in some of my interviews too consider the word sanctuary you know back in the day mm-hmm. that was a beautiful term you know yeah. like uh if if there was some place, somebody that needed a safe space, yeah, they would think I need to go to the church. Yeah, uh, wow. The church, the church is a sanctuary; it's a safe space for me. But man, mm. if you talk to a lot of these kids today and say, "Write the write the ten places where you would feel safe if, if the bottom dropped out of your life," That's right. man, I, a lot of these kids today not write the church on their top ten list. Yeah. So, I I think to me the revival. Um, in my in my approximation, right? And I'm just a human. Being. I'm just one human. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but my my heart and my feeling is, I think that the revival that would last or the revolution would be us getting back to this idea and actually fasting about it and praying mm. about it and saying, God, God, make us a sanctuary mm. again in this culture. And um, I think that would be the longevity, or that would be the revolution. Yeah. Uh, That's great uh, for me. But dude, revivals. I'm not. I, I'm never gonna trash a revival. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's. You know, we're too busy, man. We're capitalists, yeah. and we're yeah. um, we're grinding for our money all the yeah. time, me included. Yeah. These yeah. are people stopping, going. Ah, is this what this is really about? Yeah. Um, no, I actually need to spend time with God. I need to return to God and mm. and spend time pursuing that and so that's always that's always a good move because most of us are are like spiritually dysregulated you know totally. like we don't, yeah. totally. we don't spend enough time we, we're in touch with our soul with our heart with our yeah. spirit and, um and so i think yeah i i think man just this stopping of life to pursue god and be with god man that's yeah. always going to be good that's yeah. always going to yeah. be good but i think you know what the movie's speaking to i think um is more of a it really is, you know, what time time coined the phrase, but it really is, you know, I think we need a Jesus revolution. Mm. I think we That's need right. to return back to form. We need That's to awesome. spend time with Christ, but not only with him, but looking at his model he laid down for yeah. us and be like, whoa, yeah. okay, I'm going to be more like that tomorrow. That's a great word. That's a great word. Yeah, that Brent, is uh, I'm sure you get this. Uh, when there's quote unquote Jesus movies, they, they have like people think they're lesser, right? There's there's lesser. And that's why one of the reasons I find this movie fascinating. I've seen some trailers and I'm like, no, that's just a good movie. Like yeah, it like just it looks, looks like a quality, good movie. Right. But with that in mind, how important was it? People may not know. Kelsey Grammer is the, the main one of the main guys or the main person in this. Uh, how did that yeah. come about and how important was it to get somebody, you know, that everybody knows to be a part of this movie? Well, I knew it was going to be a, a pleasure and an honor to work with him. I didn't realize how much of a national treasure he was. Like when he, like, I mean, yeah. people love him. He walked out on Jimmy Fallon. They gave him a standing ovation. Come on, really? Talk. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's like beloved, you know, in our in our society. Yeah, that's and, uh, true. Like in culture, that's pretty he is. amazing. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that was, that's just amazing. Um, but, uh, just, a just a wonderful human being. Um, I mean, he's won five Emmys. He's been acting longer than I've been alive. And he could have <laughs> come in and thrown his weight around and been yeah. a terrible, yeah. terrible, insufferable person. We have, would have had to deal with it, but it's just the opposite. He's just oh, one of the most great. humble, gentle, kind human beings. Um, and uh, man, just to see him do his press has been moving us uh, deeply. But no, mm -hmm. I, he's um, he's going through a deep spiritual time right now, and I inherited him in this deep place. I found myself wanting to be around him more in between takes. Man, he just carries this peace and this beautiful wow. presence huh. where he goes, comes in the room. So he's a big actor, right? So he's got the gravitas and right. he's sure. got the thing that he does, but. And he was funny and made up, you know, stuff on set that made the script funnier. I mean, he was just amazing. But uh, beyond that, what he did was spiritually deep and authentic and vulnerable. And you just feel it. And I mean, it will, it, 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 some, his performance is going to change people's lives. That's I, awesome. Wow. Just, so, yeah, I think getting him was, uh, was huge i appreciate you guys shouting out to the quality like me and john and andy the Irwin brothers that that's part of our value system is is we want to do stuff that's competitive with hollywood yeah. like yeah. um yeah it's it's fine to it's fine to like grapple with faith and ask heavy questions and have even a message in your film that's fine i mean uh spielberg puts really strong themes and lessons mm -hmm. in his in his stuff too mm -hmm. um but if you neglect uh the entertainment value if you neglect the quality i yeah. think that sells it short so when you say yeah. jesus movies it can be perceived as lesser than I, I i really feel like that's um sometimes people want to take a, a quick like cut through trail and just mm. kind of make a film because they they have a, a, a view they they espouse and they want to get it out there but yeah. that was that was me and John and Andy had the opposite takes. Like, man, we better spend our 10,000 hours in the trade craft and let's be Great. good at what we do. Yeah, so good. And then let's entertain the heck out of people. Yeah. And then maybe, <laughs> maybe in all this, you earn the ability to talk about these things that, mm. that are important to you, like faith and redemption, renewal, forgiveness, you know, those different things. Yeah. And so, um, so I'm proud that we, we hit hard with our themes for sure. But I think, I think a couple of things. I think neglecting to entertain and be good at what you do sells the audience short, but yeah. it also um, unfortunately delegitimizes the That's right. like the genre of, so of faith. And so yeah, um, so yeah, man. As the movies continue to get better uh, in quality, and hopefully this will do really well, and a bunch of people go see it. But Hollywood will pay attention because That's right. um, yeah. Hollywood is low hanging fruit to get co opted into the, the culture war. Um, right, right. But, <laughs> But for me, um, I always tell people like Hollywood's God is not the devil. I know people like to say that, but, um, <laughs> but ho Hollywood's God is money. You know, yeah. once yeah. you figure that out, it's like, oh, this is a this is a math problem. This wow. is an equation solve. Like this is calculus. And so, once mm. you figure that out, it's like, oh man, uh, mm. if, if we can do something that looks good, that feels good, that people respond to, and and people like and it and you know a bunch of people go see it and it's it's a box office hit yeah. hollywood will pay attention to that right. and start letting more people in the faith genre that are good uh make make more films and so i, I think uh it's easy to be like um oh well they don't want our movies because uh you know because we have jesus and it. it's like no dude your your movie's bad <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, yes so so I think it's beautiful because Hollywood has this wonderful bar of quality that I, I love Hollywood movies. I love movies. I, I, I've loved movies since I was a kid. Yeah, and, yeah. and I aspire to that quality, that, that quality and that level that they hold the bar at. Now, uh, the stuff they choose to make sometimes it's, it's, it's like, uh, sometimes their stories aren't great either. They don't right. work and the themes are each, they're shallow or whatever. Yep. So I, I, I think there's a place for deep, uh, spiritual content in Hollywood, and if people go see this at the movies, especially at a time where the, the theatrical box office is really struggling, mm. um, yeah, yeah, we're going to have a lot more opportunities, uh, and I mean, more um, high caliber actors will join, like Kelsey, like yeah. as the quality goes up. Yeah. There's a lot of, believe it or not, man, there's a lot of people of faith yeah. all over the world. You're right. There's also people of faith in Hollywood, wow. and I think, I think a lot of these guys that are very talented, I, I think they will come meet us on the yeah. battlefield yeah. when they see that we've achieved like yeah. the Hollywood standard, standard. of filmmaking. 
Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Brent McCorkle, he is one of the co-directors of The Jesus Revolution. It comes out in theaters tomorrow. I cannot encourage you enough to go see this movie. I'm excited to go see it. Uh, Get my milk duds, get a nice seat, get ready to go and watch it. Brent, this has been a true joy. Thanks. Good luck with the movie. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks for being here. Do you pour your milk duds into your popcorn? No. 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 You keep them separate. I don't even get popcorn. I'm a milk duds guy. My wife gets the popcorn. You know what? I I love that. that. (laughs) Straight milk duds. Oh, man, that's awesome. Well, it's been great hanging with you guys. Thanks for spending some time talking to me about the movie. And, uh, man, I really appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Go check out The Jesus Revolution out in theaters tomorrow. You're listening to The Common Good, AM 1160. Hope for your life.